Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>
And that massive bridge that was going over top of there where they landed, hmm, if they supposedly landed there, did, would they have taken the bridge? I don't know. Blue UFOs leaving the surface of the moon. This is all slowed down and seen in my footage, my raw footage, when I gather it with the CGXL 1400 HD telescope and both the D3400, I've, I've filmed with that, and now using a Nikon D850. This is also filmed with the D Nikon 850, but we're close up. This is research, right? We're not um, going to see it on, on a gold platter and no, of course not. I don't have high tech equipment any higher than what the public can touch. And a $5,000 Canadian dollar com um, camera for me is beyond high tech for now. I'm not rich and I don't think anyone is to buy a camera for 5,000 bucks. Depends what we need, right? What I need is um, an accumulation of gathered quality, meaning the 46 megapixel camera now. I mean, I've done it with a 16 inch, uh, a 16 megapixel camera, 32 megapixel camera. Uh, I've done it with different models of cameras and you really see the difference and I am seeing the quality getting better and better and better. What is the limit? Well, it depends on how clear you want to see the surface. This is an amazing part. This is what everyone's overlooking and I say everyone. These are flickering lights on the surface and not just flickering lights. You know what? I'm going to go as far as saying we can almost see movement and activity on the surface of moving vehicles or whatever is there because these lights are not only flickering, they're moving and changing places. It's all about slowing this darn footage down. When I say slow it down, guys, I really mean it's like really slowing it down. It's incredible how you have to slow it down and analyze it and sometimes it really is not easy it never is to see uh what's down there and i'm popping this out popping this out all this footage and information and people are like well can't be getting daily ufos well you can if you're looking for them all day and all night <laughs> that's exactly what i'm doing aristarchus crater surface i spoke to you all at one point showing you that the telescope takes a while to come into focus and when it does it shows you the structuring on the surface now, somebody asked me if I've ever seen anything green but patchy on the surface. I couldn't help but show you this part of the video that I posted probably about a year and a half, if not two years ago. Uh, it's seen a lot clearer now because I've adjusted some of the older videos, guys. I'm getting better myself at the editing and technique. It's with space editing. This is all patchy greenery that's around a crater's edge. I have no idea what it is. I am not saying it's vegetation, but let me tell you, when you look at the surface, I mean, if you were over Earth and this was a mountain, there would be no doubt in your mind that it really could be vegetation. And now let's talk about saturation. I don't saturate anything, guys. Do your own tests, guys. Take the exposure down and on the moon, the colors come out, they explode. Okay, it's just, you had a crayon. Just take the exposure down and it, and it all, comes right out. The apple bite, sinus iridum, taking a look in x-ray and inversion, beautiful way of looking at the surface. So all this is here in the gray footage, guys, but it's all the same reflectivity and looking color, gray. So to differentiate each and every one of these objects, natural or not, that we're seeing on the surface here over sinus iridum, you're going to have to find a way of filtering without changing the surface um, objects, but by changing the light on the surface and the way it dis it's distributed over the image to be able to show us different areas. And that's exactly what I'm doing. It's you know, common sense has been done for probably a hundred hundred years, whatever. It's been done ever since the beginning of time that I can remember. And the fact that these objects are really up there, that's what's boggling everyone and getting to everyone saying, no way, no way. And when it comes down to is that a guy with a big telescope observatory, is he going to waste his time trying to prove to the world that this is, this is up there? Or is he going to try to pay for his telescope and work for the government, which you know, anyone would do. Sorry, there's four wheelers in the back here. Anyone would do that, right? You know, but if I had money to raise uh, funds for a telescope as big as an observatory myself for the public, well, haha, I'd make money by letting people come and use the telescope 
and I would definitely be on the moon showing them exactly what is up there. This is the most beautiful archaeological finding, I believe, um, ever. You know, look at the proof. Again, I'm showing you the craters really close up. Aristarchus, uh, sorry, blah, 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 blah. Um, Copernicus crater. Just beautiful. Uh, the levels. Notice how each object has a connected level. If the other level is over top of it, well, you actually see a line or connection running downwards to go towards that. So we're talking about in 3D here. We're not talking about in two-dimensional and just seeing a flat surface. We're seeing a low, a low angle view, like I always usually show, and we're seeing the elevation and descending levels on the surface around Copernicus Crater. Massive tunnel coming out in the bottom there, just to the right of my name, Swartz. You can see a tunnel there and uh, past the white part. Here in the darkness, there are other structures I've clarified before. It's always depending where that terminator line is, right? Well, how much light we're seeing. Look at the massive columns, the massive walls and connections on the surface that, you know what it actually looks like? It actually looks like maybe for thousands of years, they've been scraping uh, the surface away to try to expose these pipes. We've only been starting to analyze these things and keep an eye out on that. Uh, Christina Garalma Pertris, a very, very beautiful thank you for all the generous contributions. Merci beaucoup and thanks for being a part of this community. I love you so much, Christina, for it. Thanks a lot. I'm going to take a chance here. David Dispicus. I'm not saying the names right, eh? This is why I tried again. David D., thanks a lot, bro. Um, honestly, for being a part of this community and for the generous contributions. I hope you don't mind. I stuck your name up there, buddy, on the bottom right, David. Thanks a lot, man. And to everyone who comes here, uh, by coming here, you're contributing to this channel by simply stopping by to say hi or just out of curiosity to check out the videos. Thanks for the support, and there's a lot more on its way.